Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting, back from a triumphant run to Las Vegas for the uh, National Handicapping Tournament. And uh, we're going to take a look at the Rainbow Six today down at Gulfstream, which includes three stakes races. And uh, congrats on a, uh, on a good showing out in uh, Vegas. I didn't embarrass myself. I didn't finish last. I, you know, <laughs> I got in the top third, so... Uh, just a couple of horses away from the, the top 63. So I, I learned something. Maybe I'll be back next year. In you know, three years. So. And we should tell folks there's chances at, at Keeneland and, and other tracks around to qualify for this during the year, right? There are. Uh, uh, there, there are uh, getting fewer and far between at live tracks. There's all kinds of uh, online opportunities. You can play nhcqualify.com or horsetourneys.com or derbywars.com. And I think NHC Qualify has one almost every weekend. And they're not that expensive. It's 165 bucks to get in. They give away four or five spots. And that gets you in. That's the only way you can get in to qualify. And then Keeneland has a uh, $3,000 buy-in tournament in the spring and the fall. There are other tournaments. There's a Churchill tournament, Derby Day, uh, Oaks and Derby, that's a $20,000 buy-in that gives away some spots if anybody wants to play in that one. But there are also uh, other tracks, Monmouth, Arlington, uh, Fairgrounds. Santa Anita has a lot of uh, less expensive tournaments to get into. But the best opportunity is online. There's a lot more spots available there. Well, we're going to take a look at the uh, three stakes races that are part of the Rainbow Six, and then we'll uh, just give you a quick overview of uh, what our Rainbow Six ticket would uh, might look like. So we'll go to Gulfstream's 10th race, Jim. That's the turf sprint at five furlongs. And uh, Power Alert's a horse that uh, uh, did well for me on uh, Oaks Day at Churchill last year and uh, came back off a layoff to run well at Tampa. I think he's the one to beat. I'm going to try to beat him with a price horse, Stormy Rossett, the three. class. Uh, Mark Cassie just claimed this horse for one of his top clients, Gary Barber. Horse is working well, and it's 12 to 1, and that's just too much to uh, to pass up. So I'm going to take Stormy Rossett for the win, but uh, I like power alert a lot in this race. And if you're just playing this race, Pure Sensation, Night Officer, or others, I would look at an exact as and I'm going to key around Stormy Rossett. What about you? Yeah, when I looked at this race, uh, when you look at the PPs and you print them out, and it's five pages long with 14 sprinters, it's it's kind of a real handicapping exercise. And I thought it was pretty wide open. I, I like Power Alert, two for two at Gulfstream. Um, you know, he needed the race at Tampa, and I think it sets up well for him. But he's, you know, he's in the 10 hole, and sometimes you don't get a great trip out there in five furlongs. I really like where Pure Sensation is, um, drawing in the four hole. Johnny Velasquez, you can toss the Breeders' Cup turf. That uh, just had had a tough trip and um, just never really got into the race and came out of the one hole. And um, I, I think you just draw a line through there and you go back to the races at Saratoga and Parks, and he fits well here. And Velasquez will get him out. Clement will get him ready off a of, off a of layoff and a great work at uh, Payson Park the other day. And Pure Sensation would be my pick here. I would certainly not single him when we get to the pick six. However, I would use Power Alert to ten. Amelia's wild ride, the 13, fits on the class standpoint, but that is a very tough post in a five furlong race at uh, Gulfstream Park. So, uh, although I think he's got a shot, I, I don't think that uh, the 13 hole does him any favor. So, they would be my top three. Probably take pure sensation on top in a trifecta. Let's move to the 12th race. It's the grade uh, two t- uh, Gulfstream Park turf handicap. And uh, there go nine furlongs on the turf here. One of your favorites, the Pizza Man, is odds on here. He is one of my favorites. Uh, one of the things, though, that when you look at a race like this, the Pizza Man, uh, if you recall, ran a mile race at Keeneland to set him up for the Breeders' Cup turf, uh, and he just got beat by head, came from way, way out of it. Uh, I hate to see one of my favorite jocks not ride the Pizza Man anymore. Something happened between uh, Roger Brueggemann and Midwest Thoroughbreds. They took Jero off, and they put Mike Smith on him at Del Mar, and he won coming from out of the clouds like he always does. I don't think a mile and an eighth is his best distance. A mile and a half is his best distance. And so I'm going to take a stand, a little bit of stand against him. I'll certainly use him in multi-leg wagers, but he's no bargain at three to five or four to five. Uh, Shining Copper intrigues me a little bit. Shining Copper has been entered as a rabbit for the other Ramsey horse and other, like Big Blue Kitten in the the Belmont race and got out there by 11 lengths. I think... uh, I think that Rosario may be able to coax his speed a little more here, and there's really not that much more speed in the race. Uh, so I would think he's got a shot. But my pick is Luke's Alley, the one horse for Josie Carroll. The Fort Lauderdale was pretty impressive. He chased heart to heart all the way around, uh, almost caught him at the wire, but really ran well. And that, that sets him up stretching from a mile and 16th to a mile and 8th. 
Um, so I think the mile and eighth does suit somebody stretching out a little bit rather than somebody cutting back from a mile and a half race. So I'm going to take a little stand against the pizza man, but I, I'll certainly pull for him in my heart. I'm going to try triple threat for Bill Mott, the three. Uh, Source has been well regarded. From You look at the first race was a nice win, and then the, the spots that Mott uh, put him in suggests that they have a high opinion of this horse. Didn't run great, and so they give him a layoff, and uh, he comes back with a steady pattern of works for a trainer who's great off the layoff. And I just think uh, you know there's there's some reasons to to maybe doubt the pizza man first time off the bench and uh, triple threat. I'm going to take at a bigger price. Uh, I think is is dangerous uh, in here. Takeover target is the other one I would use, but I would take a three six three seven exacta boxes and key off triple threat. Thirteenth race is the Grade One Don Handicap. Pletcher's got three in here in this mile and an eighth test. And uh, did you go for one from the Pletcher barn? Well, of course not. <laughs> I think we've had this conversation before. You're trying to beat beat a, a barn, and uh, it's usually Chad Brown who has three in. And I didn't take Chad's horse either. I took Keen Ice. Um, I think they're they're they were torn on shipping him to Dubai, and and he's. He came out of the Clark well. He almost beat FNX in Opportunity. I mean, they were all right there together. Um, I don't know if you uh, – we were recording this on Thursday, and um, Frosted ran very well um, in the in the Dubai race. It's going to be an interesting Dubai World Cup as they ship Keen Ice over and, and uh, of course, California Chrome over there. So it's going to be a, a very interesting race from an American perspective this year. I think Keen Ice uh, very consistent in, the, in all the, the – in all the races except the Kentucky Derby, you know, ran well in the Haskell, won the Travers uh, over American Pharaoh. Nobody else can say that that you've won a race over American Pharaoh. So I'm going to take Keen Ice in here. Mexicoma intrigues me a little bit. That was a great race uh, at Gulfstream at Mile and Eighth in the Sunshine Million Classic uh, last time out, and he's coming into the race really, really good. I think uh, valid, made from lucky. Um, Miss a wish, uh, stretching out to a mile and eighth for the first time. Uh, although he did run a mile and eighth at Belmont on the turf, he hadn't run a mile and eighth on the dirt. So I think that's a question mark. All the Pletcher's horses have a shot, obviously, uh, and Valid has a great shot. So it's a wide open race. I would give a very slight edge to Keen Ice, the six horse. I'm going to take a, a horse on the outside. You did mention it's a knockout. Uh, 98 buyer off a, a long layoff, and that's a lifetime best. And I think he's going to improve off that into the somewhere in the hundreds. And if he is, that's a number that would be competitive and loves Gulfstream. It's a stretch. It's the the probably the highest price of the three Pletchers. But I always like that angle of, of Pletcher coming out of an allowance race, going right into a, a grade one stake like this. Uh, an ambitious move uh, is one that he does well with when a horse gets hot. So I'm going to take it's a knockout off that angle. And key him in exact is with Made from Lucky, uh, Misha Wish, and uh, Mexicoma. Mexicoma really intrigues me with that big buyer figure last time against uh, much lesser competition. So, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave out Keen Ice. If I wanted to go one more in the exact, Keen Ice would be the next one to take. But uh, I'm gonna take a shot with with it's a knockout here. Now, if you're playing a Rainbow Six, we want to give you a, an idea of horses that we would look at. And this is a tough one to keep a ticket down uh, for me. Uh, I always like to, if I play, ever play a pick six, I would always like to find at least one single, preferably two, and that's just real hard in here. So what I'm going to do is give you the ones I would use in the order that I would use them, and then you can uh, adjust per your budget. In the first leg, a, a maiden turf race, I, I went five deep with uh, Chuntia, the seven, uh, the three, Southern Wild, the six, uh, 91 Assault, the uh, eight, Who's Your Drama, and the 10, Berliner. And uh, Inspector Lindley, I think 13 would be intriguing, as would the 11 Patio Prodigy for a big price. So kind of as deep as you want to go, but I cut it off at the 10 Berliner. Then in the next leg, I'm going to use uh, Artie Type for Chad Brown and the two Pletchers, Dissident and Ian Smith. Uh, The 10th leg, which is the Turf Sprint, Stormy Rosset and Power Alert. I'm going to stick with those two. Uh, The uh, 11th race is a maiden race, and I'm going to take the two lower-priced horses in here, Cumberland River for McLaughlin and Wheels Up Now who uh, was beaten as a big favorite last time, could bounce back with a win here, I think, for Albertrani. And then in the uh, 12th race, triple threat in the Pizza Man. And if you want to s- t- try to single one, you know, maybe take a stand on the Pizza Man, uh, you know, odds on horse there. And then the, the Don, I would like to even go deeper, but I take it's a knockout, made from lucky, 
Mexicoma and Miss, Miss a Wish in that order. Miss a Wish, I think, is vulnerable. You made the point about the distance, and I think he's vulnerable. So if you want to pitch pitch one, uh, start there. But it's it's hard for me to narrow down the ticket. What about you? Well, the way I looked at it is I had to have a single because I I try to keep a ticket when I give it out under a hundred dollars, and I've I've got an eighty six dollar and forty cent ticket, I think. Um, so I'm going to take a stand. I'm either going to be in and out after the first race. I really like the one that you mentioned on the outside, Inspector Lindley. I mean, Suge McGahee, the last two races would win this, I think, 88-89 buyer. 13-hole concerns me, but at a mile and 16th, Joel Rosario riding. He rides him back, and I think uh, I think he's got a, a, a good shot um, to 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 take the first race, although it's wide open. you either got to go deep or you got to single. So I'm singling, 13 in the first race. Uh, second race, I would take three, five, seven, ten. Artie type, a first for Chad Brown. While you may for Dean K- Dean Kabiski, who had a big bomb during the tournament at Gulfstream that I should have had, and it would have put me in the top 63, but I didn't have it. Uh, the seven duffel bag Kabiski's other horse, and the ten Ian Smith. So I would go four deep in there. In the Gulfstream Park Turf Sprint, we talked about that, and I would go Pure Sensation the four. Uh, power alert to 10, and I would also include Amelia's wild ride to 13, so we'll go three deep in there. And then in the uh, maiden race that we didn't talk about, I would go 3 8 10. That would be Wheels Up Now, who would be my top choice for Tom Albertrani. Uh, the 8 Equine Perfection, what a great name for a horse. That, that's you got to have a lot of confidence in your horse to name it Equine Perfection. And then Lost Iron for Bill Mott, second time off, off you know, second start for Bill Mott is always a good play. In the 12th, the Gulfstream Perk. Park Turf Handicap, I would go three deep with one six eight. Luke's Alley, my top choice. The Pizza Man, the six, you got to leave in. And Shining Copper at a price, the eight. And the 13th, I'm like you. Go as deep as you can in the Don to make $86.40. I got four horses. So I go Missile Wish, the three. Ballad, the four. Mexicoma, the five. And Keen Ice, my top pick, the six. So that is an $86.40 ticket. 13 with 35710 with 41013 with 3810 with 168 with 3456. Best of luck on your wagers uh, this weekend. Uh, reminder that out at Santa Anita, they have a derby prep. But it's early on the card. The fourth is the Robert uh, Lewis. And uh, it's you know that time of year. We've got a derby prep about every weekend. So keep an eye out there as well. We'll be back next week with another edition of the End Money Podcast for KeelanSelect.com.